Um, moving along the, the same uh, line, so as I mentioned, um, you know, I, I believe coming up soon uh, will be a, a presentation around the collaborative investing model that may or may not have an impact on the existing compensation programs, and, and that's something that uh, you'll look at and, and consider. Um, again, the uh, benchmarks around the incentive program, uh, frankly, regardless of, of transition, that's something that we've reviewed with you uh, uh, with the investment consultants continuously, is just always making sure that you know those benchmarks, um, I think we've talked about many times, too many funds only focus on the compensation opportunities. Uh, we're huge proponents of looking at not just the compensation opportunities, but also the performance benchmarks that are behind those. Um, and, and I think that's uh, well under control and, and something that, again, we'll regularly look at. Um, and then back to the compensation philosophy. So based on whatever comes out of the compensation philosophy review and the upcoming uh, analysis uh, that McLaughlin is doing is, is looking at the market compensation philosophies and saying, you know, does it make sense where we're at? Uh, does it make sense where we're at in terms of the existing compensation philosophy, but also in terms of, of the transition process and, and the direction that you want to go? Um, you, you, at the end of the day, at any time, want to just make sure that you're following your compensation philosophy. Um, it should never, you never want to be in a situation where you're being reactive uh, to, to, to change. And that is just to say, okay, you know, re regardless of, of any type of situa situation we're in, we're following our philosophy and uh, we've got the, the, the tools and capabilities to attract and retain the talent that, that we're looking for based on our strategies. Um, the last one I find to be, uh, uh, and this is, I'm going to guess it's something that you're, you know, if, if you end up, um, you know, using a recruiter, he or she will also mention is it goes back into the slide that, that Melissa went through is just really understanding your, your toolkit, uh, and your rule book. Um, you know, I think you always need to kind of, when you go through the transition process, both, you know, regardless if you end up with an internal candidate or an external candidate, is just knowing kind of what your goalposts are, you know, and not, you know, and saying, okay, this is this is where we want you, the rule book you want, we want you to follow around speaking to uh, internal, external candidates uh, so that there isn't any kind of, you know, sideways move on, on uh, through the process and it moves, you know, in, in, a, in a good flowing fashion. And that's it. So um, you've you've probably heard this and that, but the the um, in our experience, the, one of the the biggest decision that a board has to make is in the uh, recruitment and attraction of its CEO and CIO. Um, so. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're going through this process, you're putting a lot of time into it and that, um, but it is, it's, it's probably one of the uh, biggest decisions that a board has to make. Um, so no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks, Louise. <laughs> sure. Um, I have an information request and sure. maybe before the next meeting in May, um, I'd like to see, uh, our comparative group is 67% public, 33% uh, private, right? For the executive. Well, For the executive. Two different comparative is that right? It's approximate. So I, I'm requesting um, the compensation for the CEOs and CIOs of the top 10 U.S. public pension funds by assets under management. Thanks. Sure. Melissa, is that something that McLaughlin would get for us, or is that just, but that's just something we can get on our own, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Okay. All righty. I don't have any other questions, so we might as roll right into the next item, which is the updating to the position descriptions for the CEO and CIO. Sure. 
Okay, so this item is supporting uh, your review of proposed updates to the CEO and CIO position descriptions. As some of you recall, uh, the journey to update the CEO and CIO position descriptions began in early 2018 with Amy supporting uh, the board's review and discussion on these documents. Amy is um, here to refresh you on some of the activities that have taken place. Uh, resulting from these updates, and I'll pass it over to to you, Amy. Thank you, Melissa. Madam Chair, given I know we're running a little bit behind, so I'll try to be uh, succinct in my remarks on how we got to this point. Uh, just in longstanding history, the last time these position descriptions were updated was April of 2011, I believe. And Suffice it to say, a number of, of uh, structural frameworks came into existence here at CalSTRS during that time, a more formalized existence, two of which being uh, how position descriptions are written for other senior level positions and the families of uh, or categories of positions across the organization, as well as uh, competencies for CalSTRS, the internal organization, uh, came into a more formalized state since 2011. So as we facilitated your discussions last year to identify uh, updates and attributes uh, and talked about the roles and responsibilities of the CEO and CIO, and then we tried to translate that back to the 2011 position description, what we realized is that what we first needed to do was to try to bring into more contemporary times the position descriptions themselves in the housing and different elements that they contained. And so what you see in front of you is uh, attachment one is a good example of this. It's a, it's a two-page uh, position description for the CEO, and it really focuses on the duties and responsibilities and the competencies versus attachment two, which was the 2011 version. And you can see there's a lot of additional information that goes, that, or that went into that, which typically now would reside in a recruitment packet or, of information. And so the recruitment package of information, if you can envision it, includes all of these elements but what we're asking you to focus on today is the duties and responsibilities because that's really the next step is let's, let's codify those, let's bring them into a contemporary state, both for the CEO and CIO. So I just wanted to, to lay the groundwork for the difference, the dramatic difference between what you saw in 2011 and what you see now. And with that, I think I'd be happy to take any questions, Madam Chair. So naturally, I have a couple things to say. Um, on the updated version for the CEO, just um, stylistically, um, in the very first line under the position description, who doesn't need to be there? It's just the executive, chief executive officer is the executive administrative head of the system. And then on Under, um, so this would be on comp 17, so this is under the CIO, and um, it's the second paragraph, and it talks about reviewing and managing the appropriate risk allocation, or the appropriate asset allocation of the investment portfolios in accordance with our risk tolerance, including those of the cash balance fund, and then it says supplemental defined benefit. And I just want to make sure that we're using the same terminology in the description as we use in the system. And so I've always heard it, instead of supplemental defined benefit, it's the defined benefit supplement. So whatever terminology needs to be there, needs to be there. So fair point. So it's the common language is used so everybody knows exactly kind of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and Amy, um, and this is a conversation I had with <coughs> Melissa. Um, I, 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 I personally like the prose part of the old um, description when it talked about um, the competency, so like strategic orientation or team leadership. It, there was actually a prose part to it, not just a, a, a bullet. And I, I understand that we're trying to make it to be uniform with 
the other ones that we have. So just as long as somewhere in the background, if somebody wants to have a more in-depth conversation about the bullet lines or the bullet points, mm -hmm. that the, somewhere there's something that's written that can ex fully explain that. And maybe that goes, I think what Melissa and I were talking about, that yeah. would actually go out in the... We ha it would we, go out in the recruitment ready materials? Yes, we could definitely pull this out and be a little <clears throat> bit more specific in the description for the competencies or those personal characteristics yeah. you're looking for. What I can share with you is for those bulleted competencies, we have a comprehensive competency guide okay. that actually provides descriptors to each and every one of those. That'll be fine. That, okay, as, long as, as long as there's something somewhere that somebody could put their hands yep. on and say, you know, I really don't know what they mean by... Influencing and empowering others. Mm -hmm. What others are they talking about? That kind of thing. So. Definitely. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super. Thanks. Are there any other questions? Sharon? Curiosity question. Sure. Is um, I was just sort of curious, you know, there's an education requirement for, I think, the CIO, but not for the CEO. And I was sort of curious why we have a different education requirement for those two positions. So for the CIO position, we actually, it's a civil service a servant okay. classification, and so um, there is an education component that is included in that legal document so like a as a minimum qualification. Have have a BA for the CEO, it's an classes. exempt appointment, okay. and so there is no um, established uh, minimum qualifications. Or so there's some flexibility for the board to um, establish what those qualifications look at when you're ready to go out to recruit for that position. So that that's the distinguishing um, factors for both. Okay. So we don't necessarily. So that would be when we would make that decision. That's, yes. We don't necessarily need to make it now in no. the in the in the position description unless that's something we want to do now. Yes, and okay. uh, uh, that is the one thing that I failed to to point out. The benefit of this kind of framework is that uh, whereas the duties and responsibilities are not changing given the environment, really, unless you're making significant shifts like the collaborative model, for example, which we brought into this. All of the other elements that were in the other position description, you as a board uh, will get the opportunity to evaluate and update mm -hmm. at the time you do the recruitment. So that makes it real timely then, instead of trying to predetermine things now that potentially could be out of date three or four or five years or whenever that is in the future when you need it. Go ahead, Sharon. So is that almost like, I'm thinking about how we do recruitment like for presidents or, you know, like campus, you know, college presidents or something is like, you have your required qualifications and desired qualifications. Mm -hmm. Is yeah, that the right. same idea? Yeah. Okay. That's right. yes. So we can, as a board, say our desired qualification is that yeah. the next CEO has a yeah. PhD yeah. and preferred. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. and that, that's a typical okay. conversation that an executive recruiter would want to have with the board and also an understanding of how can we fine-tune, okay. you know, here's your list of competencies, but given your circumstances right now and that future vision of where you're going, what, what are, are the sure? five to seven that are absolute must-haves for you? And that's really how they go about doing their filtering conversations and also how you as a board do that as well. So, And, and, and I do like the format that there's core competencies that we expect everyone that's in the building yes. to have and then adding the, the specific to the, that's to right. the job. I so yes. I, I'd like that we're moving in the, the, Good. the direction that we are. Thank you. All righty. Any other comments? I think that does it. Are there, um, so we have the information request. Braden, do you want to <laughs> go ahead and read it back to us just for practice? Okay. Uh, pursuant to item three, the committee requested a comparative analysis of the compensation for CEOs and CIOs among the top 10 U.S. pension funds by assets under management. Thank you. And Melissa, um, there we'll was think about the other that Harry made about um, just the, the uh, state employee salary structure that we'll put in place too. Yeah, or, or the talking about our work plan for next year, just yeah. what we might do with um, taking a look at the, the whole staff as a whole and mm -hmm. what that structure looks yeah. like. Kind of the principle. All employees instead mm -hmm. of. Equitable treatment, yeah, equitable I think treatment. is what you had said. Well, did you want you. that to be an information request as well? No, I think, we're, I think we, um, Melissa will um, keep that on her plate okay. for us. For, the work plan. for our work plan. All right. And so that we'll continue to have that conversation as we develop our work plan. That I think information request mm -hmm. is something we would like as as soon as staff could get it to us. Okay. Harry, is, is okay. next meeting or do you want to have, like if they get it in a couple weeks, do you want it to be sent out to the committee? 
the, the top ten? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they could just forward it to us. Just like whenever it's ready? Fine, yeah. That'd be great. And the other issue is a broader okay. conversation for us just to and we'll put it on around philosophy we'll around equity of pay. Okay. And do you have something else? I, I do. Okay. <laughs> Go. I got gotcha. you. So um, maternity and paternity leave policies. Um, Can I have a? Can I get a copy of what our policy is here at CalSTRS and how that compares to um, the most progressive maternity and paternity leave policies sure. uh, in the public sector? Yes. Thanks. That again is for. As soon for, as you can get that to us, yeah. just send it on out. Thanks. Okay. All right. Anything else? Melissa, can you just reiterate what we're doing in our work plan moving forward? Because I have like updating the comp philosophy. So I, I don't have that plan, in front of me. We are going to go over it. Okay. We are going to go over it in May. Okay. Um, some of the items that Luis actually highlighted, highlighted as next steps okay. will be incorporated into your work okay. plan. I just want to make sure because I take notes now and I'm not going to yeah. remember in and, May. And it will encompass also the request um, at the November meeting where the committee asked for um, kind of embarking back on that comprehensive incentive structure evaluation that we had put on hold. Okay. Okay. And it'll be also uh, complementing or tied to the collaborative model and any, any decisions you make there um, in May. And you're planning a July meeting too, if I remember right, right? For the yes. board, for the committee, I mean? Okay. Yes. So there'll be two in a, two in a row. All right. Also meeting in May and July. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at our draft agenda for yeah. May? Yeah, so you, the, the big item, of course, is gonna be the labor not market analysis that uh, Luis uh, will partner with Michael Oak, with McGloggin, to present to you. We're also going to provide, uh, uh, update the collaborative model compensation planning. Uh, Scott and Chris will be presenting that in May at the investment committee, the execution of the collaborative model. And so this is really just the human resources um, compensation complement to that. Uh, we'll review your committee charter and we'll also um, so go, over work plan, go over the work plan for next year. Perfect. All righty. Okay. Are there any statements uh, from the public? This is your opportunity to speak. Seeing none, the Compensation Committee is adjourned. Thanks. Wow. You are um, right on the button there. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Well, now we said adjournment at 930. Yeah. So yeah, we're, a little we're, we're a little bit off. Um, we said 9.45. Let's take a 10-minute break. Uh, actually, let's just start at 10. We'll start at 10. The board will start at 10.